Yep. All right, so we are here to talk about magic numbers and endless love. In other words, how do we retain our users? So we are from Wooga. Wooga is a social games company. We are uh, building games for Facebook and mobile. Uh, we started off with Facebook and uh, are moving into mobile now. So nowadays, uh, around about half of our employees, which is around about 200 at the moment, um, are dedicated to mobile games, whereas the other half is working on Facebook games. And we just announced Diamond Dash for Android, as well as Monster World uh, for iOS. But obviously, uh, when we are talking about retaining users, we have to look into older games. Uh, was <laughs> I guess that was not for me. <laughs> All right, so we will look into older games, which is um, Monster World on Facebook. If you don't know it, it's, a, it's essentially a farming game, but with a little twist. So it has monsters running around, uh, watering plants such as, well, unicorn trees and ice cream flowers and what is on there, the furry eye plant, for example. Um, and as well, we will be talking about Diamond Dash Mobile, which is um, it's a one-minute jam rush. You have lives and you have one minute um, and basically you tap and get rid of the, the stones, the gems. All right, so to start with, and I'm here, the number girl, um, I will show you a lot of numbers. This is the all-time uh, DAU curve of Monster World. So Monster World is already more than two years old, which, um, um, yeah, uh, is very nice for us that uh, the game is still retaining the users. So as you can see, it was not an, a hit at the very beginning, but we managed to um, have a steady growth and it grew to over one, uh, two million daily active users. And um, Monster World has an amazing loyal fan base. So basically we are trying to build a franchise so people can actually enjoy the game for more, uh, for more and more years. And the same goes for Diamond Dash uh, Mobile. Uh, it launched in December 2011, and after the initial spike that you can see in December here, which was the Apple featuring, we kept on working on the game, and um, I will show you some examples what we did. So the game kept growing and, um, yeah, is still retaining the users as well. So which are the numbers, the KPIs that we actually care about? We will only talk about uh, retention here because retention is way more important for us than virality and, well, monetization is another topic. We will not talk about it. But retention obviously is more important because if, um, well, you bring in a lot of users virally and they don't stick to the game, it doesn't really help. So we will look into day one then into the day-to-day -day retention, and then obviously, well, if you play a game day and day and day every day again, you're basically in it forever. We hope so. So retention starts at day one. Basically, you have three questions to answer on this very first day. So what happens there? The first thing that the user sees is for Monster World this. It's a loading screen on Facebook, and here the user decides very quickly, oh, nice. This is monsters running around in a garden. That's awesome. Let's go for it. Or, which happens sometimes, obviously, is hmm, monsters, I don't know, it's not really for me. But let's assume you're really into Monster World. Then this is what you see next. It's the tutorial of the game. Here you have to make sure that the barrier of entry is very, very low. And this I show you, and it's kind of, well, we have seen this several times. But to be honest, it took us weeks and weeks to get there, to get this tutorial to the perfect point where users basically were not able to fail at all in this very first session. So now let's assume you taught the game to the player. But what's next? Basically, the user has to have a feeling that there is a certain reason to get back to the game. So what we do in Monster World is we have contracts, so this is the plants growing in the game, and we show you the time that you need, uh, when you need to come back to the game to harvest those plants. And something else that we are using is foreshadowing. So um, you can see there in the very first session, a stork is flying into the garden and, um, well, leaves this letter to you. And obviously you click on it because you want to know what it is about. And this is what you see. So what we do here is foreshadowing something in the future, but we are not telling you what. And 
If you're really that cold-hearted to leave that looking stamp, have a look at the stamp, it's looking at you. So if you're really that cold-hearted to not get back to the game because of this stamp, we will send you an email anyway to remind you that you should better get back to the game. Now, we do, how do we do this? How did we get there? So those were the findings of our first uh, months into development of Monster World. And it looks that easy, but it was kind of a ride. And uh, we do that uh, through user testing and A-B testing. You have heard about it several times, so I will not go into the details. Obviously, user testing, just very briefly. We put users in front of the game and just look at them. So very often I hear, listen to your users. I'm a fan of looking at our users, so really watching them, how do they use the game, and where do they fail, and where did we obviously make mistakes in the design of the game. And A-B testing, well, we just have two design solutions for one, um, for one feature, we put that live at the same time, and we look into the KPIs. And here again, I very often hear, measure everything. I'm rather a fan of defining a KPI that I want to increase which in our case was the one-day retention, um, and then design a feature around that KPI. And then once you have both versions live, obviously you look into that KPI and the better version goes live for 100%. Now looking into mobile, uh, you have the same questions to answer. It's just very different, it's not a loading screen. For mobile, obviously, it's this app icon, where we did a lot of tests on those app icons to find out which works best. So this is the app icon for Diamond Dash Mobile. It shows you a bit of the game, and obviously it's very catchy. And then, as I said, again here, again, we have a tutorial to have a very low barrier of entry into the game. And to get you back to the game, we use push notifications. So in Diamond Dash, you need one life per round you play. And when you run out of lives, you have to wait the li for the lives to, well, reload. They uh, refill over time, and we will inform you that uh, your lives have been refilled and that you are now actually able to play again. To sum that up, as I said, so you have to have a catchy theme, people have to love what they see on the very first sight, then um, you have to make it very, very easy for the user to get into the game and not to fail, really make sure that nobody can ever fail. Um, and then you have to answer the question, what is next? So you have to create some closure that uh, people are actually engaged to get back to the game. All right, now, day-to-day -day retention. Now we have the user after one day in the game, but now we have to keep them to day two, day three, day four, day five, and so forth. So um, um, here again, I have three ways of what we are doing. Um, which is first is uh, we focus a lot on social, uh, second we update our games constantly, third is we build in new mechanics that are deeply integrated into the core game loop that it gives you a richer gaming experience. So looking into social, um, as I said before, Diamond Dash I didn't say that before. Hmm. Diamond Dash is a connected version, so um, you can, it's fully synchronized, you can play it on Facebook, you can play it on your I I iPhone or your iPad, and um, to connect those, uh, we use Facebook Connect. So on the left-hand side, you see we are in incentivizing your Facebook Connect. Once you connect to Facebook, you will get more lives in the game and you can play more rounds. But even more important as well is that, um, well, you have your friends in your high school list. Obviously, it's for you way more important to beat someone you know, rather than beating a random person on a um, not personal high school list. Um, so something that happened yesterday, I played Diamond Dash Mobile, and later in the evening, or was it in the morning? I think in the morning, I saw this. So we have this weekly tournament going on. Every week, we reset the, the scores, and you can get a gold medal and a silver medal and a bronze medal. And um, here I got a push notification that Zünke, he's sitting over there, <laughs> Zünke overtook me. And well, as I know Zünke very well, I want to be better than him, let's face it. So I better get back to the game and try and beat, beat him, which I did for the rest of the day. <laughs> and um, well, I basically failed on it. So I used all my lives and obviously at a certain point I ran out of lives. So what can I do then? I can either buy new lives or I can start sending requests to my friends. And those requests, um, they end up, well, they show up at, uh, on Facebook and on mobile as well. 
Uh, so, well, hopefully Zünke as well sends me a life so I can beat him. Mm. This is what an engaged user looks like. And this is not just a random stock image, it's actually my mother. And I gave an iPhone to her <laughs> for Christmas and, well, you can see she's very, very happy. So to put that into perspective, what I was just talking about for, um, for Diamond Dash Mobile, 64% of our users are using Facebook Connect and they are way more engaged, so way more likely to get back to the game. As well as um, they are eight times more likely to pay and when they pay, they pay around about 50% more. So, for my mother, and uh, talking a little bit more in, about uh, social relevance, sometimes when I get back uh, from travels to my parents, sometimes I travel to my parents, and when I get back on Monday mornings, I look into a lot of puzzled faces. In the Monday morning stand-up, very often I hear them, hey, how did you manage to get your Diamond Dash score to that level? Like, did you actually master the game? I have to be honest with you, I really suck at the game. So, that's where my iPad went over the weekend. My mother was playing like crazy. So that much about social relevance. It's like people get to you and tell you, hey, what happened to your Diamond Dash score? Okay, then that much to social. Um, what we learned as well, uh, and what is really important for us is um, content, constant content updates. So um, on Diamond Dash, this is a very nice example where we added magic powers to the game. Um, it enriches the gameplay, it basically boosts in the game, and it helps you to, well, beat Zönke <laughs> in a better way. And this is what happened to the DAU um, on the day we launched that feature. So um, people start to be more engaged and the DAU curve goes up. And the same happened when we uh, launched the Color Splash. It's another boost in, in uh, Diamond Dash Mobile. And here again you can see the DAU curve went up. We do the same in Monster World. So Monster World is a bit different because we are on Facebook. We can have uh, weekly updates, which we do. We still have a small team working on the game. And um, this is an example of missions that we have in the game. So we learned very early that users that are running out of tasks in the game are less likely to come back to the game. So this is a curve that we uh, constantly look at. It's the only curve that I know that when it goes up, it's actually bad. So it shows the users that are running out of missions. And as I just said, the, the users that are running out of missions, um, they are less likely to come back. So here you can see our release cycles. So whenever the, the curve goes down, we released a new set of, of missions and the users have more tasks in the game. So we thought, hey, that's cool. And I said already that, okay, this much to content, uh, we really try to build more engaging features that are deeply integrated into the core game loop. So here we thought, hey, the missions are working well, why don't we build timed missions? Which essentially looks like this. You get a task, you get a task again, but here you only have 24 hours to fulfill this task. And, well, we balance it that way that you better come back to the game very often because it's quite tough to solve those tasks. And in the very first iteration of this, of this feature, we only gave out rewards that we usually give out on the usual missions as well. And then we saw, okay, we put it live uh, in an A-B testing group, and we saw a nice bump in, um, in engagement as well as, as monetization. But it, just, it was just very short term. And here, um, I have to say that for Ruga, it's very, very important that we build something that is engaging over a long period of time not only a short bump, it doesn't really help us. So what we did was, well, we stepped back, we took it off and iterated on the feature for weeks and weeks. It actually took us quite some time. So then we introduced Mr. Busy. That's Mr. Busy, he's uh, standing out of, outside of the garden and um, he has his clock. It's still the same mechanic, so we still have those 24 hours to fulfill some tasks, which is increasingly difficult but we added something. So here, from those missions, you get materials. So if you fulfill those missions, you get materials and you can build this workshop that you can see here. And in this workshop, from further materials you get, you will be able to craft amazingly super duper awesome decoration items. Um, and those decorations, decoration items, you only get through those missions. 
And, well, you're comparing to your friends. So if you really want to be cool, if you really want to have this super rare decoration item, you have to go through those missions. And then you can say, hey, this is my plane, my car, my castle. And, uh, oh yeah, something we added on top of that is, um, it's a very well-known mechanic, but we added a collection to it, so the, the human need of um, fulfilling or filling a collection is um, attached to that feature as well. Here again, the engaged user. So this feature, we, um, we just recently put it live, so I can't really share any numbers because they, they are not stable yet, so it doesn't really make sense. But what we can see already in, um, in the A-B testing group with the, the timed missions, that they are way more engaged and, well, at the side as well, monetizing better. All right, to sum that up, um, for day-to-day -day retention, um, make sure that your game is socially relevant. Um, and then, well, as I said, we learned that content updates keep users engaged to the game and um, from, time to from time to time think about adding core mechanics to your game. Now the interesting part comes. Um, Mike Siegel from Gaia Online said it last year. I already wanted to quote him last year because I thought it was amazing what he said is that love is um, the most important metric. And with that I hand over to Timo. Wow, so it's up to me to talk about endless love and forever. Some pretty strong words. So how do I start? Nothing lasts forever. This is a very painful lesson I've learned back in the summer of 2002 when my first true love left me for a guy who listened to sunshine reggae music. So I locked myself up in my apartment for quite some time. I ate a lot of junk food and uh, listened to very, very depressing music from Iceland. And after a, f after a few weeks, I was really sick of myself. Um, I had this feeling growing inside of me that I have to do something special, something meaningful with my life, and I wanted to regain the power over myself. So I decided to finally face my childhood nemesis, Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo. Um, <laughs> does anybody know the game? Did you ever beat it? Okay. Otherwise, we should definitely have a drink afterwards. Um, anyway, in, in this game, there's a huge map, millions of missions and uh, trillions of collectibles. And the fun part is, you can't save the game and there's no password system at all, so you have to beat the game in one session. So I started playing the game and kept the Super Nintendo running for seven days, went out to get some groceries, and in the meantime, the Super Nintendo died somehow overheated or something, so I went out, bought a new one, started all over again, and, and 10 days later, I was pretty close to finish the game. So I was never so excited in my life before. I went on the boat to send out the SOS signal to the other island so the helicopter can come and pick me up, and then I was running through the jungle with a big grin on my face, stopped by at the T-Rex for one last time to wave him goodbye with my middle finger, jumped over the river, and while I was waiting for these few seconds on, on the airfield for the helicopter to pick me up, there was so much stuff going on in my head, like, oh my god, probably the game's not over, like the helicopter will pick me up and fly up into the air, and then there are all these flying dinosaurs attacking and I have to shoot them up out of the helicopter or probably they, they will add a, a funny joke of the T-Rex um, attacking the restrooms and eating the guys sitting on the toilet. But the guys from Ocean decided to keep it simple and by simple I mean extremely simple because they just show the intro animation backwards. And, um, the, and the intro animation was a rotating Jurassic Park logo. So, why did I open up my teenage diaries for you guys today? Because people want to be rewarded. Um, and they don't play 10, especially in our business, they don't play 10 day sessions like I did. If we are really lucky, they play 10 minute sessions. And in these 10 minute sessions, we have to please them like crazy. And I know it sounds extremely simple to do so, but I play tons of social games each week. And a lot of developers, including Vuga, tend to Jurassic Parkify their games. Of course, it's not enough to just shower the, the users with coins and XP and energy because let's be honest to ourselves, we are not our target group. Our target group are not hardcore game nerds and probably like the throwing money at people work at a presentation of a Double Down Casino, but, <laughs> but not in our case. Um, because uh, most of the people playing our games are actually women. 
And if you want to find out who's really playing your game, it's pretty easy. Just go to your Facebook fan pages and take a look at it. In our case, these are like crazy cat ladies and, in, and the indie MacBook girls and moms and nerds and Hello Kitty fans. And yes, they are still out there. I was quite surprised as well. And um, lonely moms and even more cat ladies. <laughs> And, and these women, they, they don't take a week off to play the latest version of GTA or something. They, um, they play when they have some spare time, like, oh, look, the boss is busy hanging out with Katy Perry again, so he's not watching and we can do some fun stuff in the meantime. So they log in into Facebook to, let's say, um, harvest some crops in Monster World. And at this specific moment, we don't only have to compete with Zynga and King and EA and all the other great companies out there. We have to compete with all the people posting weird and crazy and funny stuff on their wall. Because what happens quite um, often is, oh, look what Stephanie just posted. It's a baby monkey riding on a pig and, oh my god, there's also a video. I definitely have to check out the video. Wow, they put a song on it. That's a pretty catchy tune. I have to definitely see it again. Ah, I should repost it. Ah, someone responded. Yeah, right, it's cute, right? And then, like, it goes on and on and on, and then, oh, wow, uh, oh, the boss comes back. Why did I log in again? Ah, never mind. Baby monkey, baby monkey. Yeah, it's a pretty catchy song. Um, and that's why it's not enough to just throw coins um, at the users all the time. The people want to be uh, surprised when they play their games. They want to, um, yeah, they want to be surprised, they want to love, they want to scream out loud, oh wow, that's, that's pretty cute. And the job is not done by just adding like, a super cute big-eyed baby and, uh, monster to your game. And it's also not done just like putting cats into your games. Because like Don Draper always used to say, if it, would, if it would be that easy, monkeys could do our job. And we are obviously not monkeys. And um, it's not about cats at all, and it's not about babies and kittens. Um, it's about the lovely little, little details we add to the games. Because um, there are people out there who are playing, for example, Monster World over the last two years every day. And we just have to take care about that they are not going to be bored. Let me give you one example. This is uh, Robert the Robot. He stops by at your garden in Monster World and offers you a deal. So basically, he asks you for crops, and in return, he offers you some money. And then he waits at the garden um, so the user can uh, fulfill the mission. So we did the first user test, and we thought, yeah, it's a pretty smart move to, like, we have monsters in the game, and then we, like, put a robot into the game. Everybody knows girls love robots, boys love robots, and he also has big eyes. It should definitely work. And then we did the first usability test, and the people really hated this guy. They said like things like, I'm scared of him, probably, I, I don't know, he, t he puts a lot of pressure on me, he, he always wants stuff from me, it feels like he wants to collect protection money, probably he's a mafia robot or something. <laughs> and we really didn't know how to solve this problem, and while we were thinking about how to improve the mechanic, one of my graphic artists um, had some spare time, so I asked him to come up with some uh, idle animations for Robert. Um, and that day, a robot found out about his love for rope skipping. So we added this rope skipping animation for Robert randomly when he was raiding at your garden to, for you to fulfill the deal. And later on, we also added Robert playing the PlayStation Portable, and we added Robert playing ping pong with his new girlfriend. Um, and without changing the mechanic at all, people fell in love with this little guy. And they sent us pictures of Robert, and they posted stuff about Robert on their, on their uh, Facebook page and stuff like this. And, this um, and at this moment, we decided we definitely have to add like, all these little jokes and surprises every time we have some spare time. And this is something that is also good for the team spirit, because if, if you work on, a, on, a t on one and the same title for, let's say, one or two years, there are always these moments where you really hate your game. So in my case, it's, I look at Monster World and I really hate the grass. It's just, it's, it's all the colors and stuff, and it's like, oh, it makes me sick. Probably you can change the green to gray or something, I don't care. It just, like, it really fucks me up to look at the game. <laughs> so the tough thing to do here is uh, to fall in love with your game again and again and again, otherwise you can't do a good job. And, it's also, and, and you always have to take care about that also your colleagues and your teammates uh, fall in love with your game again and again and again. And so we decided to add these little surprises and jokes without telling our colleagues. 
For example, one week Steffi was extremely stressed and exhausted, like she was running around in the office like crazy and then she was um, sitting in front of her screen with these little red eyes and then she always starts like curling her hairs and these hair horns standing out of her head. And we thought, yeah, we definitely have to cheer her up. So we stayed a little longer after work and added this robot flirting animation. So he was standing next to Roberta, the other robot girl. Um, and he was really shy and the romance started this day. Um, and the next day, Steffi came, uh, came to the office and she started playing Monster World like she used to do in the morning. And after a while, there was this very sweet giggling sound out of her corner. And that was the moment she discovered this animation and she was really surprised. And then we had our daily, uh, daily smiling Steffi back. Um, so to sum up, you need to reward the player with the love and passion. They re really have to feel all the heart you put into the game. And second of all, try to make the user smile every day, how we call it um, at Vuga, the daily smiling user. And on top of it, use the magic numbers Steffi just um, talked about to optimize the game flow. Yeah, so here I'm back with the numbers. And as well for me to sum that up, um, obviously the numbers help you uh, tremendously to take informed decisions and not decisions just on your gut feeling. But as Timo just showed, and you, everybody was laughing in the room, I saw that. Um, the love makes a really big difference and this is something that you will never be able to measure. There is no KPI that describes uh, whether the version with a rope skipping robot works better than the other one. And it's nothing that you can go to your boss and say, hey, this number is now increased. It's something that you just have to add by your gut feeling, obviously. And well, we do that because we love our games. Yeah, and like these two factors don't work um, like on their own. You always have to take care that these are both in your game and they have to like build up a relationship to give birth to something that is fun and unique and convenient to use. Because um, never underestimate one of these two factors. It always needs heart and brain to create engaging games. If you have any questions, shoot. <laughs>